three, four. God, in you I put my hope. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Oh Lord, my God, in you I put my hope. In you, in you I find my peace in you in you I find my strength in you I live and move and breathe let everything I say and do be founded by my faith in you I lift my holy hands and sing, let the praises ring. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my hands. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my feet. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my everything. Oh Lord, my God, to you I give my life. In you, in you I find my peace. In you. In you I find my strength In you I live and move and breathe Let everything I say and do be found by my faith in you I lift my holy hands and sing Let the praises ring Let the praises ring let the praises ring, let the praises ring, let the praises ring. Good morning, I'm Reverend Alexis and I welcome you to worship today. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us on this day. I am so grateful for our contemporary praise band worship team that's here with us and for the congregation that has gathered to help us create this experience just for you so that wherever you are, whenever you choose to join us, you are able to worship as fully as you want to, sing as loudly as you want to, pray as audaciously as you want to from the comfort of wherever you are. A few announcements as we continue. We know the weather is turning colder as we're putting this together. There was snow on the ground, if you can believe it. I can hardly believe it myself. But we're continuing with the things we've been offering so far. We are still doing drive-up worship, 8.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Reverend Mark and I are just bundling up a little more warmly. We're here at 11 a.m., and you can make a reservation to join us, to be here with us, to help us create this worship service and you can see this go live at 9 30 in the morning plus we're still doing bar church eight o'clock at night spread 8 30 at night spread out in the tap room of barley's picnic and praise is still happening and it's an unknown right now whether we'll be inside or outside we may move it to fellowship hall since the kids are all back in school and that's now an option so be paying attention to your announcements and for that chance to come and be with us on Wednesday nights um, and just watch for more information. We'll try and get it out in as many ways as possible. Now I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Mark to lead us in our opening prayer this morning. So as we begin worship today, let us join together in our opening prayer. 
Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please join us in um, the song, Holy Water. again. God, I'm begging, please, again. I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin Dead man walking, slave to sin I want to know about being born again I need you oh God I need you so take me to the riverside take me under baptized I need you oh God I need you your forgiveness is like sweet sweet honey on my lips like the sound of a symphony to my ears like holy water on my skin I don't want to abuse your grace God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water, your forgiveness Is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin Holy water on my skin, like holy water. We have a guest children's person. Oh, I interrupted. Miss Shannon is here with the preacher's kids. She might be on in the video, but not in the 
long as they can hear me. Can you hear me, Teresa? Oh, we were doing so well. What happened? <laughs> it's been a morning. It's all good. How are you this morning? Good. How was your first full week back at school, Mags? Good. Good. Nehemiah, well, I was going to ask him, but it's okay. He'll be back maybe. All right. So tell me what happened outside this morning. It snowed It's outside. It did snow outside. Was it a lot or just a little? Uh, a little. Not near enough to make a snowman yet, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. She might try later. You never know. I bet it'll be all melted by the time we go out later. But we'll get more. Don't worry. It's just October. So before we got the snow, what was happening outside? What happened? What did you see last weekend? What's been on the ground that goes crunch, crunch, crunch underneath your feet? Leaves. And what did you do yesterday? You carved? Pumpkin. Was that fun? Yes. yes. Is that, go ahead. I, I also painted my pumpkins. You painted and carved them? That's the first time you've carved, right? Yes. Did you, did you open it up and get all the seeds and get all slimy? We are cooking the seeds and eating them. That's fun. They're good. They're tasty. Yes. And, and, and we just, and we just make the big Pumpkin, happy pumpkin. You, had a, you carved a happy face into him? Yeah. Good deal. And You're and leaving? That was short. <laughs> and, and, the, and the little pumpkins I painted blue and black, and the big one we carved it. Did you put, have you, I didn't look on Facebook. You'll have to see if mom and dad put pictures on Facebook. We want to see them. You did? Not okay, yet. not yet. So we'll look for pictures on Facebook so I can see your pumpkins. Cool? Yes. All right. So I brought a scripture this morning. If I can find it on my phone here. It's Psalm 19.1. It said, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Did you know that God talks to us? Not like a big booming voice God, but that he talks to us sometimes. Did you know that? No. No? Well, he does. Have the, when you heard the crunch, crunch, crunch of the leaves, have you looked at all the colors they are? Yes. What colors have they been? What colors have you seen? Green. Mm -hmm. what else? I went for a drive yesterday. Can I tell you what I saw? What? I saw yellow and orange and red leaves, all different colors. It was beautiful. <gasps> Me too. Yep. You've seen them too, haven't you, when you're driving along? Yeah. So God talks to us just kind of with nature, right? When we see the seasons change, when we see the snow on the ground, you like snow. I only like it if I get to stay home and don't have to go anywhere. That's when I say snow is pretty. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not fun to drive in because it's slick. But pretty soon we'll have snow and there'll be a snowman. And that's God's way of saying he loves us. Isn't that awesome? Yep. So, so what do you think our job is to do when God talks? What do you do to me when I talk to you most of the time? What do you do? do you listen. listen. Nehemiah said it. He said, listen. Most of the time you listen. 99.9% .9 of the time you guys listen. It's okay. Same as us adults. We don't always listen, but we try. Right? Yeah. So that's our job, to listen. When God talks to us, we have to be quiet and just listen. Yeah. Should we say echo prayer? Anything else you want to say before we say an echo prayer? No. All right, let's say an echo prayer. Are you going to echo, Mr. Nemo? All right, ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the leaves. Thank, thank you, you for the leaves. leaves. And the snow. And the snow. And the crazy seasons. And the crazy seasons. Help us to remember. Help us to remember. To listen. To listen. To, listen to you. To you. And all you tell us. And all, all you tell us. us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> As we prepare to hear from God through our scripture reading today, let us join together in the prayer for illumination. You who are over us, you who are one of us, you who are, give me a pure heart that I may see you, a humble heart that I may hear you, a heart of love that I may serve you, a heart of faith that I might abide in you. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Peter and John were going up to the temple at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the established prayer time. Meanwhile, a man crippled since birth was being carried in. Every day, people would place him at the temple gate known as the beautiful gate so he could ask for money from those entering the temple. 
When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he began to ask them for a gift. Peter and John stared at him. Peter said, look at us. So the man gazed at them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I don't have any money, but I will give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then he grasped the man's right hand and raised him up. At once his feet and ankles became strong. Jumping up, he began to walk around. He entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the same one who used to sit at the temple's beautiful gate asking for money. They were filled with amazement and surprise at what had happened to him. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here. back on the 100 block and I am back sitting outside of Barley's because let's be honest they have the best tables here <laughs> uh, I just like this spot it's a nice spot on the 100 block and I'm thinking about Peter and John in our scripture reading today Peter and John aren't wealthy men they're they were fishermen originally right and they had spent three years following Jesus and they had just had an experience of of Pentecost, um, Jesus' death and resurrection, and then Pentecost happens, 
and 3,000 people joined the church. And last week we talked about how those people had their things in common so that none had need. But you can imagine if you're sharing your wealth amongst 3,000 people and more, remember scripture also says that God added to their, added to their number daily that nobody is rich, right? So here's Peter and John walking to the temple to worship as they probably did a lot. And they're confronted with this man who is forced to beg because he is unable to walk, which means he's unable to work. He's unable to farm. He's unable to provide for himself and his family. And so he depends upon the charity of those around him, which was not an uncommon thing in in Jesus's time and in Peter and John's time. And people were very generous um, back then. And so I'm sure he was doing okay, but it still wasn't ideal, right? That type of living is not ideal. And so Peter and John come along and he says, do you have any money? Because that's what he's asking everybody, right? This man is sitting by the gate as they head into the temple and he asked them the same question that he's asking everybody, do you have any money? And Peter and John, now imagine them for a second. Peter and John are looking at this man, and I love the description right there, staring at him intently, as if his life isn't awkward enough. Now here come Peter and John, staring at him intently. And they're faced with a conundrum, because it's still dangerous for Peter and John to be Peter and John. It's still not popular for people to be identified as followers of Jesus Christ. We're less than a year out from Jesus' arrest as an insurrectionist. He's killed by the military state of Rome because he's considered a rebel. And, and Peter and John are now out in public where they didn't want to be before Pentecost because they were afraid. And they're looking at this guy intently to decide, I don't know what. But eventually what Peter says is, we don't have any money, as we pointed out. We're sharing our wealth amongst, let's say 5,000 people now. We have no money, but we have this thing. We have this thing that is too good to hold back and as risky as it is for us to offer it to you, we're gonna offer it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And this man is healed. He stands up, they bring him into the temple to worship. He starts walking, his neighbors don't recognize him. He starts telling everybody what happened because what else do you do, right? And he says, these two guys came and healed me in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you were to go beyond the scripture reading, you find out that Peter and John are arrested for what he did and they're called into account for proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. So it was in fact a risk. For them they were right we can imagine why they hesitated but this message of Jesus Christ is too good to hold back if we really are sold out believers that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life that worshiping Jesus is the way to have the most joy the most reconciliation the most peace that passes understanding the way to wake up and keep breathing even when life is at its absolute hardest. If you have ever been in a place where you have said to yourself, I can't imagine how people do this without faith, then you realize that you have something in your life that is too good to hold back despite the risks. Enter into our third space of the blueprint of discipleship, serving the world. We realize in this space that the message of Jesus Christ is just too good. But, but, notice that Peter and John aren't standing on the corner shouting, Did, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? What they do is they offer this person healing with no expectation of response. And so when we talk about serving our neighbors, when we talk about having something that's too good to hold back, that's what we want to talk about here at Broadway United Methodist Church. Our third space of our blueprint for discipleship, the most out there space, the space that could even be called apostolic, not just discipleship, but those who are sent out into the world, is probably the space that's going to feel radical. 
to you and it's going to be public it's meant to be public this is the space that you one would enter into and give expression to when when one is ready when one is mature enough for everyone to know that they are a follower of jesus christ through broadway united methodist church and they make no apologies for it so what does that look like well in terms of prayer it might actually look like writing your own prayers, sharing prayers on social media, writing prayers for worship, attending, attending and maybe even organizing prayer vigils for different community concerns that we have. In terms of presence, we're hoping what it means is serving on um, nonprofit boards and agencies or serving on a board and agency for a charity event that is not associated with Broadway United Methodist Church, but serving on them in such a way that they know that you're coming with this Jesus perspective. So helping with spirit of courage, spirit of courage, helping with events on the 100 block, helping with promise partners. The, the presence piece is, is the showing up and participating long-term in shaping the face of Council Bluffs as a member of Broadway United Methodist Church. Maybe it's even running for public office. Maybe you feel convicted to serve on the school board or to serve on city council, carrying your discipleship with you into those spaces. Gifts is generosity, sacrificial giving of financial gifts at 10% or greater. Because we know that that, that that type of giving dramatically changes communities and it doesn't all have to go to Broadway United Methodist Church, right? And so if you're in a place where you could give 10% or more of your income and some of it could go to the church because remember we did that growing together space where we were, we were giving some of our gifts to the church. But also if you're practicing that kind of generosity, you could donate to Spirit of Courage. You could donate for when like the 100 block went gold for childhood cancer. You could donate to to a myriad of charities around town at greater than 10% of your income. And we're going to help you connect to some of that. Service would be helping with six or more Serve for Justice initiatives a year and or helping with events out in the community as a member of Broadway United Methodist Church. Again, I keep coming back to Spirit of Courage and I think it's because that event is so huge and there's billboards everywhere. It's easy to imagine it, but that's just one of many events that happen around town um, that we could help. Maybe it's Habitat for Humanity that we work at, but the, the Serve for Justice initiatives when we work on greening the town or when we do in-gathering throughout the year, these have a global impact. And so participating actively in six or more of those a year um, is a piece of, of the service. And then witness, again, witness doesn't have to be scary, but it's being willing to tell your story out in public, to tell the way that the ministry of the church has impacted you in the way that you feel comfortable. It can be coming here to Barley's and sitting around the table with your friends who don't go to a church and just telling them a story of something you did that you really enjoyed at Broadway United Methodist Church. It could be creating something on your own for social media that shares a story of something you've done at Broadway United Methodist Church. It could be inviting people to come with you. The marker that we've set out is that you would invite five people from outside the church to an event or a program at Broadway United Methodist Church a year, or, or that, that you would share your story with people who aren't part of the church in some way, whether that's on social media or again, over dinner with your friends. So this is the third space and these expressions are the most challenging because they truly are the most public. This is the most uncomfortable people feel, but it's also the place where we start to change the face of Council Bluffs, or we start to not even change it, continue to perfect it in love as members of Broadway United Methodist Church. And so we're gonna push, 
we're going to push out uh, out of our space, out of our spaces of, of seeking God where it's all about us, of growing together space where it's all about the church and it feels kind of safe. It's a little bit safer, right? Because these people are in this journey with us and we're all, we're all together uh, building up our blueprint. The serving our neighbor space is the least safe space, but it's also the space with the greatest impact on the community that surrounds us. And it's where we truly get to show to the entire community of Council Bluffs our uh, seeking, growing, serving with unconditional love and acceptance. We've reached a time in our service where we ask you to consider your offering, what you have to give to the church. Um, the financial gifts, we know that Church doesn't look the same as it has in years past, but as, even as we move through different seasons, but uh, the work of the church still exists, and um, I know it can be difficult even when you're not in the building to remember to give to the church, but we just ask that you remember us um, even now when you're watching online um, to, to partake in our mission and our vision and our worship by giving financially to the church. But we also recognize the ways that you're praying and serving our church in the world. So let us join together in an offertory prayer as we consecrate this great work. Will you pray with me? I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Put me, place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let, Let me, me be put, put to work, work for you, or set aside, aside for you, praise for you, or criticize for you. Let, Let me be full. Let, Let me be empty. empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And a wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you, you are, are mine, mine and, and I, I am yours. yours. So, so be it. it. And, and the covenant, covenant which I have made on earth, let us also be made in heaven. heaven. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to join together in the prayers of the people. And my hope is that this might be a time of personal connection with God, that you may lay bare all the things that are on your heart, all the things that are bringing you joy and praise all the things that are bringing you concern and weighing your heart down. Let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you for your presence in our life. For you are our creator, our sustainer, the source of all things, and the thing that keeps us all in motion. We would be nothing without you. And so what can we do but give you thanks to reciprocate your great love that you show for us, to follow through on those things that you ask from us. We know in this past week that we have not been perfect Christian disciples 100% of the time. There are times when we have fallen when we have said, said something that we regretted, when we did something we knew we shouldn't have done. And for all these things, we ask for your forgiveness. We confess to you that at all times we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We confess to you that at times we have not loved you with our whole heart. But in the midst of coming to terms with those truths, we thank you for your grace. Because we know that you love us unconditionally. That is the one who keeps things moving, you pick us up, put us back on our feet, and send us on our way to be your disciples in this world. In every season, and every week, and every day, 
we have new things that pop up in our lives that cause us pain, distress, that cause us to celebrate or feel warmth in our heart. So now we give to you a time of silence. We bring you those things at this time. As we've spent time in personal confession and supplication, we also come to you as a community, as a community of faith, confessing to you that we have let people slip by, that we have not kept your kingdom in our minds at all times. And so we ask for your guidance for our church, how we can have the greatest impact in this community how we can show the love to the most people. How we can reach those who might not even heard the great name of Jesus Christ. We also pray for the community of Council Bluffs, that you might be a light shining in the darkness. We pray for our country, that we might treat each other with respect, that we might treat each other as human beings made in the image of God. That even as some hurl insults, we might stand firm in another way. That we write Respect the sanctity of human life wherever it's right in front of us. And so as we go forth, fill up our cups. Help us to experience your Holy Spirit tugging us and pulling us back to you. Help us to grow as your disciples. And so now we pray those words which you taught your disciples so long ago when we pray now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to close the service out today with uh, Gary Milborn and Love Like Jesus. I want to walk this out with my head held high. I want to see the world looking through your eyes. I I want to know that you're leading me. I want to do what you're asking me. I want to walk this out with my hell, hell high. Love, forgotten ones, love, the children, love, the I want to love like Jesus. I want to believe the things you say. I want to trust the promises that you have made. I want to know that you lead me. I want to do what you ask of me. I want to walk this out with my head held high. Love, forgotten ones, love, the children, love, the friendless. I want to love 
love like Jesus love. Like Jesus, and when my life is good and done, I want to find my way back home. When my light fades away, I want to hear the good Lord say, Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. I want to love like Jesus. I want to believe the things my eyes can't see. I want to draw the water from the well runs deep. I want to know that you lead me. I want to do what you ask of me. I want to walk this out with my head held high. Love, forgotten ones, love, the friends, love, the children. I want to love like Jesus. Love, forgotten ones, love, the children. Love the friendless. I want to love like Jesus, and when my life is good and done, I want to find my way back home. When my life fades away, I want to hear the good Lord say, Well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. Jesus. Amen. Beloved, my prayer for all of us is that we would rise to the calling of the Holy Spirit, that we would walk through this blueprint and fill up all our spaces and all the expressions, and the end result of all of that would be that the world would experience God working in us and through us in such a way that they are drawn to God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Be in the presence and power of the triune God. Amen. One, two, three. You and you I find my peace and you In you. Let the praises ring. Let the praise. 